Welcome to my caching tutorial in Nest.js. In this video, I'm going to teach you how can you implement caching in Nest.js. Before implementing caching, I want to teach you why do we need caching. I was asking this question to myself when I was learning caching. Uh, let's imagine you have a web application or a mobile application. Instead of sending direct request to the API, to the backend database, it will send the request to the cache. Cache could be, it could be a temporary memory. You can use temporary memory in your project like Redis is advanced production level approach for implement caching. It could be any in memory cache. Like you can cache data for two minutes or three minutes, depends on your use case. Let's say there are some queries user are frequently accessing, then you can cache that data. Let's say I don't need to change that data. Let's say we have some kind of displaying some records here. This data will not be changed after five minutes. So we can cache that data for five minutes. Instead of sending every request to the backend server, we can cache that data. So this is the major use case of caching. What are the benefits? It helps to increase your response time. So instead of sending backend request to database or if you're using external API, you will put more load on the server so you can prevent that use case. Your server will be behaving like a fast. I know you, you will use any real world application like Netflix, Facebook, Google, all of these big applications are using caching. It improves the scalability of your application. This is also a scalability approach. It is one of the factor or one of the element of scalable application. If you want to scale the application, you can consider the caching is a strategy. Caching is a strategy to scale the application. Uh, you can cache database query. Let's say there are some, uh, there are application and one query is accessing over and over again and data is not changing, then you can cache that data. Or maybe you can cache data for 10 seconds or 15 seconds in a large application in stock or real stock market trading application. You can also cache the API response. I'll teach you how to do that in Nest.js. You can also implement caching in session storage, search query caching, search query caching, and rate limiting. You can set the rate limit on a caching, how many requests a user can send. You can add caching per for specific IP. Now we're going to start the project. Uh, let's create a new Nest.js project. I'm going to use this command nest new caching sample. You can choose any name for your project. My project has been created successfully. I have, I have navigated into my caching sample and I ran npm start. Let's do that. I can open that project into my VS code editor. Let's run npm start or nest npm run start dev. Now my project has started. I can go to the local host colon 3000 and I should see hello world. Now it's time to use the caching. Nest.js provide two packages to work with caching. 
this this is this is a temporary level cache like in our node.js in nest.js application if you want to use a real world caching then you can use radis i'll teach you how to do that first we need to install dependencies nest.js cache manager and cache manager First of all, we need to inject these two, uh, these cache manager class in your app module. Let's say I wanna use this cache manager in my app module, so I gotta import it here. Make sure you import this cache manager module Let's import the cache manager, cache module. Let me show you what is inside the cache module. I can go to the cache module. Cache module has two methods, register and register async. What this register method will return, it's gonna give me the dynamic module and you will have, this is the cache interface. We also gonna use that. It's gonna create the cache and this is the cache object I will get. You will find these methods in a cache object, cache.get, cache.mget, ttl, set, cache.delete. Under the hood, it's a key value pair, cache.cached, cache.stores. Now it's time to inject the cache manager in into any provider. So you can inject into your service, you can inject into controller, however you wanna do. Let's say I wanna inject into my app controller. Let's inject it. And you gotta provide the name of your key. I would like to inject the cache manager so I can provide that. Make sure you import the cache manager. I also need to import cache. So this cache will have this type of method I, sh I, I, I shown you. It's an interface, it's a class. And you can find that from this create cache. This is the cache instance. You're gonna get these methods in cache, cache instance, this one. Let's create some values in a cache. What I can do, I can create a new endpoint. Or let's do it here, I can say, we have this cache manager. You can use the set method to set the value to the cache. I can say hello and this is the value. Now I can also get that value. All you need to go to provide the key name which is hello. And I can return that, let's say cache manager or I can use it here. Make sure you gotta use the async await. Promise and this string. Let's run the application.
application is running I can send request to the uh, local host call and 3000 now I can see the world whenever you reload the application it it's gonna set that value make sure you uh, use the await expression to set the value now it's gonna give me the world 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 uh, let's return hello this is something you can also set the TTL on your cache what do I mean by TTL? The value should be deleted after number of milliseconds. You can set that. Let's say I set the 5000 milliseconds. It would be 5 seconds. So let's access that. Console.log. This dot cache manager dot get and hello. Or you can create a new endpoint to test that I'm gonna copy it here this time I can say cache 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 data <laughs> cache data get cache data it should be apply a weird expression and or you can return it here too so I'm gonna set the value to the cache let's do that here I'm gonna set the value to the cache now I wanna access the value from the cache I can use cache data but I did not get anything cache data it did not set it very well what is the issue let's set it let's get it now I can see that I got the fault well, but it cached for five seconds let's access that cache now I'm in the find five seconds range range if I get it again it's gonna give me the null so you learned the TTL concept Now we're gonna talk more about how can you cache API response. Now we need to cache the API response. Let's create a new API. Should be get in the name of the method. I can say find user. It's gonna return the promise and let's define the ID. ID should be number type and the the email of which is string. And we need to return a new promise. Let's use the set timeout to prove that. So we need to return ID one and email which is jane at gmail.com. Right now we did not cache that data. It will wait for three seconds. You can imagine that this should be API call or DB 
find one method, something like that. I can say user. Let's send the API request to slash user. It will wait for three seconds and then it's gonna give me the user. What we want, we need to get the result from the cache, right? This dot cache manager. Or well, first we need to s apply the caching. You can tell Nest.js, hey, I wanna apply the caching. There is an interceptor you need. You need a cache interceptor, that's it. And now your API will cache that response, this one. First time it's gonna take three seconds. You can see that it's taking three seconds to load the response. Now my response has been cached. You can see, this is amazing. We can, you can also do more advanced stuff. You can set your own cache key. By default, it's gonna store the cache with this user. You can also do that, your own custom key. Let's say I set the custom user. You can also set the cache TTL. I can set the, let's say 5,000 milliseconds. The cache will be stored for five seconds. Let's do that. First time it's gonna take three seconds. Next time it's gonna fetch from the cache. After five minutes, it's gonna send the again. Now you can see that it is sending the request again. This is how you do the API caching. One more thing, if you wanna set the value to the cache, you can also do that. Let's say this dot cache manager dot set. Uh, I can say that can uh, my user, I can say custom user, same property. And the value should be, let's set the same value. And you can also set the TTL, I can set the five milliseconds. Now I should be able to access the cache data here. Instead of this dot cache manager dot get, I can return this dot cache manager and custom user now my user will be cached for five seconds why it is giving me the error i think i set the object here let's set the any or remove that this dot cache manager dot get please cache my user now user data has been cached Let's set, get the cache data. Now you can see that the value is getting from the cache. Five seconds has been passed. Now I should get the null or something like that. This is how you do the API caching, API response caching.